It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, October 6, 2011. I am James Burns. Thank you so much for joining us. We are joined now by Bob Chapman. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Well, pretty good. That's good. Uh, A bit bit cooler up here in the northern hemisphere, but I'm sure things are going to start warming up down there soon. Well, it's... um it's about 82 today. It'll be 62 at night. That's it's kind of strange. Is it? We're we're at that point now where both both hemispheres are kind of at the same levels. It's about the same up here as well, but I'm sure it'll start going the other way very very soon. Uh, the first place I'd like for us to go to today is the Middle East. A lot of stuff going on there. You have uh, what a couple of days ago, President Assad of Syria. He's now threatening to attack Israel if NATO attacks Syria. And, Bob, let's say hypothetically that NATO does get the green light from NATO to commence their, I don't know, Operation Humanitarian Love Fest on Syria. Will Assad follow through with his threat, and could this action be the final straw in the Middle East before everything just you know, goes to hell? Well, you know, they can do what they want to do. And if they send NATO or anybody else in, Syria is uh, going to be defeated and taken over. And uh, will they do it? Maybe. Uh, Will he retaliate against Israel? Maybe. Uh, They're in a position where they could turn Syria into a desert zone with nobody there. (laughs) And uh, I don't think it'd be a very good idea for him to do that unless he's suicidal. But maybe he is. People on the other side are super, super suicidal as well. So uh, you got nut cases on both sides. But um, yeah, it would lead to a confrontation with Iran. Uh, I just got a piece in from Europe, from Sweden. And there's an article in Swedish, which I put in the publication because we have Swedish subscri- subscribers. And they decide, they they uh, <clears throat> they describe how the Greek government has just ordered 400 American tanks. Now here is a country that's going into bankruptcy. Um, are they going to have a war next week or something that I don't know about? Maybe. So those are the kind of things you got to look for because the way the middle, uh, the southern Europe sets up, uh, that could happen. But the Middle East, anything could happen. And so I think probably they might send foreign troops into Syria. It would be interesting to see what the Russians do. They have a base there, a large naval base. And I wonder how they'd react. I don't think it would be too well, Bob, especially since you know Russia and China have been against the uh, NATO operation in Libya. So I'm sure they're once again going to be uh, pretty ticked off with the uh, West and NATO. And I, I think and my my fear is everything that's been transpiring over well for a long time now, unfortunately, but just the past decade alone. Uh, with the invasion of Afghanistan, Iraq, um, the uh, drone attacks on Pakistan and Yemen. We're about to talk about that in a minute. Uh, and, of course, the what happened over the skies of Libya. I think uh, we're getting closer and closer in the Middle East towards a big, giant confrontation. Well, it, would be the, it, it might be the right time for the Illuminists to do that because Europe is upside down. I could take 15 minutes here and tell you what's going on there. Uh, if you want, to, want me to, I will. If this is all the floor new. is yours, Mr. Chapman. Um, first of all, about a um, about a month ago, we started to get information that Germany was well throwing in the towel is not the right phrase, but 
they started to realize what I told them two years ago. And that was that there's no way that you can rescue Greece. Number one, they can't pay any money back. Number two, the people almost every day are in the streets, whether it's 5,000 or 2 million. I mean, yesterday they had, I don't know, 50,000 in the streets. They hate the government. The man that runs it's a Marxist and he's a luminous. There's about 50 people like him in Greece. Very, very wealthy people. And they all belong to the Illuminati. And um, they, they, the people realize that because I've been radio and television and the newspapers there for um, ah, about two years off and on. And so the things they didn't know before they know now. And I think that they haven't lived up to the austerity program, which they promised they would. Uh, they're 25 billion short, and that includes uh, cutting all wages and salaries of people who work for the government by 50 percent, retirees by 50 percent, raise real estate taxes, and what they're doing, trying to do right now, is uh, make the increase in real estate taxes retroactive to 2001 if you can believe that. I mean, just the increase they had, people can't pay. And they've done a whole bunch of other things I won't go into. So Germany finally recognizes, I told them that the bill would be $4 trillion, And they said $1 trillion. And then about six weeks ago, I said the bill will be 4 to $6 trillion. And they said 3.5. So they're starting to catch up and catch on. So with that said, I think they've decided, even though money has been allocated by the uh, Bundestag, the House of Representatives, that they and the other Europeans may say no. Now in the meantime, the German and French governments both are, print, are printing, in the case of Germany, they're printing um, Deutschmarks, and the French are printing French francs as a standby in case the euro goes up the spout. Now, if Greece does not get their loans, by the middle of November, they'll go under. And if they go under, there'll be a war. And it's already been arranged on both sides, from my viewpoint. That'd be Turkey versus Greece and Israel. Now you wonder why Israel is involved there when they really have very little and nothing to do with Greece is because the man who runs the company, country, the communist, whose father was a communist as well, and uh, Andres uh, Papandreou, in the 80s, uh, looted the country like it had never been looted before. And uh, the son is in the process of trying to do the same thing. And his Zionists, the Jewish. And uh, so that's why the Israelis are in there. And I'm sure that the U.S. government's got a lot to do with it because they're going to deliver 400 tanks. I don't know who's going to drive them. I don't know whether they get the personnel. Maybe they have. I don't know. And um, so anyway, if this thing falls out, then I suspect that they'll have their planned war. And the Turks will withdraw and lose but by the very nature of this war, whether it's a week or a month or three months, because it won't last long, it'll divert everybody from the problems in Europe. 
and an invasion of Syria would do the same thing. They might even do them one after the other or simultaneously. Now, believe me, all of this stuff is planned out ahead of time. And we have the French banks without dollars because the money market funds and pension funds in the United States, they had about 65% of all of their money in bills and, well, bills, all bills. They had bills, notes, and bonds. Bills are the short ones. They had 65% of their money there. Over a two-week period, they reduced that to 35%. And I'm sure they reduced it since last week, maybe to 25%. But the money that was just pulled was the money that the banks and the corporations and the government was borrowing in order to maintain liquidity. So along comes the Federal Reserve who says, we're going to make a swap agreement with the French banks and we're going to come up with $500 billion of which the Bank of Japan, the Bank of England, and the Swiss National Bank will participate in. And that's not really true because I don't think they're going to participate in it. I think it's just going to be the um, Federal Reserve who has given them money. And if you read my, read my publication from yesterday, there's a note in there from somebody who I know in Hong Kong. And they tell me that the French government was in the final stages of negotiation with the Chinese government to buy out three of the largest French banks, which means they're broke totally. So all of this stuff is going along underneath that you don't know about. And then what Germany's doing, and France I think is going to do the same thing, is they're going to shore up all of their financial institutions like the Landsbank, there's several of them in Germany. The savings and loans is what they are. And <clears throat> those savings and loans in other banks will get money from the German government if they need it. And they'll probably get nationalized. And the same with the French banks that aren't ba bailed out by the Chinese. So this is going on underneath the surface. The Germans look at it this way, finally. It only took them two years to figure it out. Uh, we can help the six nations and bankrupt ourselves. And the people don't want to give another dime to anybody. Or we cannot give the money to them, let them go under, get rid of the euro, and go back to the D-mark and the French, the same thing. And I think that's what's going to happen. I see one of these nincompoops on television telling everybody to buy euros with both hands. This is called disinformation. Uh, this is called the worst possible advice you could get. See, what they do is they use the media and they put up these charlatans. People don't know they're charlatans, but they are. And they lead the public in the wrong direction. And that's what's happening. But anyway, the euro is history. You know, it's, all, it's just a question of when. And I don't know when. Could be two weeks, could be two years. Most likely two or three months. Maximum six. So this is going to go on for a long time. All of Europe is going to have to be bailed out for the great money machine, better known as the Federal Reserve. And at the same time, 
besides European nations that are holding Greek paper and the paper on the other countries that are in trouble, they um, have problems. That's England and the U.S., which probably is still holding in money market funds alone 25%, which probably is around $100 billion. And uh, the big banks in New York, <coughs> they sold credit to small swaps to the French banks who wanted protection against the Greeks going under. That's $150 billion. So the banks and the money market funds are probably, and pension funds, are probably offside something on the order of $300 billion. And that's a guess. So it's going to have far-reaching re far effect. Europe's going to have to end up writing four, off four to six trillion. It, the, the, the numbers are colossal. And they knew what they were doing. Bankers aren't dumb. They figured the public was going to pay them back. But the situation's gotten so bad that even the public would be unwilling to bail them out. And so that's why the president's working group in financial markets continues to run the stock market up because they, they know there's lots more bad news coming. And they run it up, and then the bad news takes it back down again. And they do it over and over again. At the same time, they attack commodities and gold and silver where people have been putting their money to avoid being in the stock markets and the bond markets because they don't think that they're going to be protected there in any way. And they're right. And the insiders know that the people who run this mass manipulation are going to continue to do it. But what is the future of this manipulation is they only can do it for so long. And finally, even the people on Wall Street in the city of London say, look, we know what you've been doing for a long time. It's got to stop. We can't trade the markets. We can't play the game. And um, and so uh, we're in a problem here. And if you notice every time, and they've done it three times in the last two months, they take gold and silver down. It goes right back up again. They took it down again. It went right back up again to a new high, mind you, on gold. They took it down again. It's on its way to going back right back up again. No matter how much money they devote towards knocking it down, it's not happening. And so it's a losing battle for them. And um, probably and maybe gold and silver will break out to new highs before the year is out. And that may be very, very painful at the wrong time because they believe that people equate lower gold and silver prices with there's no problem. And that's why they manipulate that market along with commodities. And so that's what's going on right now. And... Uh, you know, you get on Bloomberg and CNBC, and everything's okay. Well, everything is not okay. It is very, very difficult. And it's going to get a lot worse. Well, I believe that's you know true as well, Bob. And if if you don't believe that, then obviously you've been you know drinking the Kool Aid that the mainstream media loves to. Uh, you know, dish out. Uh, Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Uh, sticking with the uh, debt situation for a moment with, uh, you know, 
uh, the debt growing in uh, not only the U.S., but England, uh, the European Union as well. Uh, do you think it's going to get to the point, Bob, where eventually the debt's just so deep and the mountain's so high that they're going to have no choice but to do kind of a, a jubilee on the debt, kind of like a, a forgiveness, uh, a reset button? I think they'll do that. And um, I've talked about that in this program before. And uh, you might call it what you did. That's a biblical term. But I think that, um, trying to get a read on the market here while we're talking, uh, I think what's going to happen is that there were meetings like this in the early 1970s at the um, gosh, I say the word a thousand times if I get it right now at the um, Smithsonian meetings in Washington and it was a partial everybody didn't uh, participate and the same with the next two which are the Plaza Accord in 85 and the Louvre Accord of 87 so there is precedent we're having a big meeting, and before they have the meeting, the agreement is made, all the currencies are revalued and devalued against each other, and then multilaterally, those that have debt will be able to write it off, and uh, that is an arduous job, would probably take three months to do. Maybe it could be done quicker, I don't know. And that's what they're going to do. And they're going to decide what is going to be the new international reserve currency. And no matter what it is, it has to be backed by gold. If they use an SDR, it won't work. There's no, they cannot have any gold back in as part of the IMF charter. Um, Amero, forget it. Euro, forget it. It's going down the hole. And what I think they'll do, and I've said this before, they'll continue to use the dollar, but the dollar will be backed 15 to 20 percent by gold, which is normal. Some nations have had 30, 35 percent, but there'll probably be an agreement to do it around 20 percent. And so that's the course I think they'll take in regard to what you said. Yeah, so definitely uh, I think that that's eventually coming. But it, I, I also believe that it's a means to the end. I think they want us to get to that point to where we're, we're so, you know, desperate and, you know, basically begging the powers that be to save us. And, of course, they'll come in as planned and, and bring order out of chaos, the chaos which they created. That's right. And uh, they're going to be there and they're going to try to do that. And... Um, how, how successful will they, be, will they be? I don't know. It's a hard call. Uh, they could have absolute chaos for all I know. And uh, we're going to find out. Maybe not right away. I can't put the timing on. I'm not that smart. I don't think anybody else is. And I also think that they don't know when it's going to happen. All I know is that they've lost control. Can they retrieve it? I don't know. Maybe. So that's the shape of the future. It, it definitely seems the direction we're heading. And in, in Russia, it looks like that Vladimir Putin's about to become president again. Of course, he was you know, in power all along. I mean, uh, Medvedev is just his puppet. But he's also seriously thinking about forming this uh, Eurasian Union, Bob. And if this does eventually transpire, uh, what is going to be the regional and global ramifications? Well, they're all friends now anyway, so uh, I just think it'll be another block that will act together. And they'll act independently as well. It all depends on the issue. And um, they're all buying gold like mad. So you can believe that their currencies are going to be backed by gold. Uh, that'll make their 
currencies, premier currencies, so to speak. And uh, I, I think that, quite frankly, from a Russian and Chinese point of view, that's a terrific idea. I think the Japanese will stay within the U.S. orbit, so to speak, and uh, because of their commitments uh, from the results of World War II, which is a whole other subject. But it's it's a natural uh, association. They're all socialist, or I will call them all socialist. And um, what they're doing is protecting themselves. And when you see what's going on in Europe, you can say, well, we don't blame them. I mean, the Euro really has been a, ultimately a disaster. And they were able to fend off the problems for a long time. But no more. And they are right in your face. And there's very little they can do about it. Except to value and get back to the business of business. And the Eurozone and the European Union will be broken up. <laughs> and I think it's the best thing that could happen to Europe. You know, people say to me, well, the Senate committee is turned over to the full Senate in just four or five days. The proposal that China be punished for uh, cheapening their currency. Well, I got news for you. Everybody's been doing it since World War II. That's how they try to compete by cheapening the currency, which means the goods that are sold by any country to the United States are cheaper than what they might be otherwise. Now, nobody seemed to notice that the Chinese two weeks ago said we're not going to buy any more American chickens. That's a big item in the United States. And on top of it, the U.S. economy will lose a minimum of 300,000 jobs. I mean, they need that like they need a hole in the head. And I'm sure they discussed it ahead of time with the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese are starting to play hardball. And that could end up in a war as well for purely economic reasons. And so that possibility of trade war is very strong. And that, to me, is terrific. If we go back to tariffs and goods and services, that would bring all the transactional corporations home. There wouldn't be any reason to produce a teacher shirt in China for a dollar that we produce for a dollar and a half. Because if you have tariffs, the Chinese in order to sell shirts here would have to pay 50 cents for every shirt they brought into the United States to level the field. That's the way tariffs work. And that's what's going to happen. And that will be the beginning. And that will be terrific. And then all of these companies, 450,000 of them, most of them are going to come home. And they're going to rehire that 11.7 million people that they threw out of work by screwing them. So I think it's wonderful. And I'm the only newsletter writer who says it that way? Nobody says anything about anything about trade. I don't think they understand, but they should. Yeah, I I think you're absolutely right on that one, Bob. I think most of these people, these talking heads on uh, CNBC, Fox Business, you name it, are, you, like you mentioned a moment ago, Bloomberg as well. They just uh, they don't know anything. All they know how to do is read the really? teleprompter, just like our puppet president. Well, I was also including in that some of these so-called middle-of-the-road-to-conservative 
hosts who are perpetually on CNBC, CNN, and the Bloomberg, and as well, newsletter writers, they never talk about it. All I see is sensationalized crap so they can sell subscriptions. I don't worry about subscriptions. I make enough to live, and that's all I care about. At my age, where I'm going, they don't use money. So there's no incentive for me to do those kind of things. And I get very irate every time I see them do it. I start, in the last week, one guy did it twice. It's awful. Just awful. Unconscionable to the public. It's going to cost people a lot of money by doing the wrong thing. So, And, and I would also say, Bob, that it's criminal. I mean, they're, they're obviously misleading uh, the people. And like you mentioned, they're, they're going to cost people a lot of money. They're going to ruin a lot of people's lives. And I, and I think that you know, there may come a time where you know, people like that will be brought up on charges. Well, it's just like Standard & Poor's. They, they bring them up on charges, usually civil. And the court says, no, it's an opinion. You can't do anything about it. And it's the same thing with newsletter writers and people who are on television. It's their opinion. They get a right to be wrong. Think about that. Yeah. That, that's a very So there is no retribution, and that's why they do it. It's awful. And the industry is rife with it. Now you know why I'm so unpopular. I call a spade a spade. I don't care what people think. Not one bit. They, they wish I'd go away and die. <laughs> I'm not going to accommodate him for some time to come. <laughs> I hope that's the case, Bob. I hope you're around for uh, at least uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 more years. Oh, Bob, 400 or 500. Yeah. Hey, might as well go for it. Asked me, uh, <laughs> Just keep on trucking, Bob. <laughs> I'm going to get bu- I'll go bib- biblical. <laughs> I can see that happening. Uh, Bob well, I don't know whether this bottle body will hold up that long. My mind seems to be uh, all right so far. Uh, well, that's the way it is. It's, it's mind over matter. That's the way it has to be. I mean, <laughs> anyways, Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. dot com. And uh, before we uh, move back to the states and talk about this Occupy movement, I want to get your take on what uh, has transpired a couple of days ago. Uh, the American-born Yemeni uh, al Ada asset Anwar al-Awlaki was supposedly killed by a U.S. drone attack. And if this was true, Bob, is uh, any American citizen safe from being targeted and killed by this uh, U.S. government uh, secret panel? No one has set a precedent. No, the guy's not dead. He worked for the CIA. Why kill him? They just said he was killed. How do we know? We didn't go there and find out. We're going to take their word for it. And they lie about everything. So we don't know what they're doing. And chances are he's not dead. He'll probably turn up in the bazaar in Tangiers or something, which is a horrible place. Uh, uh, you have no idea. If you ever get a chance to go to Morocco, don't. It's horrible. Uh, that said, uh, there's no... There's no, um, I don't know what the word is for it. There's no control. Everything is out of whack. And they tried an experiment which encompassed uh, 50, 60 years in Europe. Uh, The iron steel community and then uh, the, um, the European common market and then EFTA after what it was, it was a group that was not the full membership, it was a partial membership. And then they rolled that all into one in 87. And was it 87? And formed the European Union. I can't remember the date. But I lived over there for years. I saw the formation of that. And I knew it wouldn't work. And I live with those people. I speak their language. I traveled everywhere as well as living there. And it didn't fit. And I think the whole thing blew up in their face. I think they underestimated their situation, and then everybody gets deeply in debt, which is a horror story. 
And, you know, some people think it was a setup, and they're very intelligent people. I don't agree with them. The setup being it was set to self-destruct. Maybe, but I don't think so. It's, it's very fascinating how all this stuff plays out. And, I mean, it's, it, it's like you said, like a few minutes ago. I mean, we, we don't know what's going to happen until it happens, unfortunately. And, and uh, going back to Anwar Alaki for a moment, Bob, I mean, I, I agree with you. I don't think he's actually dead. I mean, it, it's, it's just as much believing that as what happened back in May when they said they finally killed Osama bin Laden, the boogeyman of uh, <laughs> this war on terror. I mean, they have, they have presented no photos, no video evidence, nothing to prove to us that they killed him. All they did was say, oh, well, we, uh, well, we, we, you know, we put a bullet in his head and we uh, you know, made him sleep with the fishes, just like the mafioso. Well, um, the least they could have done is uh, uh, brought back a finger so we could have uh, identified whether this, in fact, was uh, Ben Laden or the other guy. I mean, that's, the things that they do are so stupid. You know, when I was working in association with those organizations, they were smart. They didn't do stupid things like that. I mean, they must have a bunch of meatheads working for the CIA. I can't believe it. I mean, people aren't that stupid. Even if they don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. I agree, but unfortunately, Bob, as you and I both know, you know, there's a huge majority of our population that have been so dumbed down and programmed that they'll believe anything the government tells them. That's true. In my next issue, I have a, uh, a tape a link, and it's a young woman who tells the uh, moderator all about welfare in America. And when you finish listening to that, you want to throw up. I mean, they get everything and we get nothing. It's incredible. And But that's going to stop. And what are the people going to do when it does stop that has this largesse coming in from the American government that can no longer give it to them? I don't know, but it's not very good. No, it's going to get ugly and... That's what a lot of these people don't realize is that eventually uh, that well is going to run dry, and I think it's basically almost at bingo fuel as is, Bob. Well, they still get 45 or 50 million people on food stamps, and they still have extended unemployment, and they've got to do it or the whole thing will blow up now. I mean, these people will go crazy. Yep. And, and the, the timing couldn't be worse if it was to happen now. I mean, you see what's happening here in the States with this uh, Occupy movement. It's continuing to grow and spread, not only here, but also throughout the world. There's uh, Occupy movements in London, Manchester, a couple of, you know, growing in uh, uh, Europe. Uh, but, you know, there's a collage of people involved in this. I mean, obviously, there's the front groups like uh, Soros, uh, Move On, uh, Socialist, Communist, Obama supporters. A dozen unions have now joined the movement. Uh, there's also anarchists. But at the same time, Bob, there's also uh, libertarians in there, Ron Paul supporters, in the fetters, students. And, you know, the rest, I would just say, are basically angry Americans who have had enough. And with the, the reports of police brutality in New York and now Seattle against the occupiers on the rise, as well as more people joining the Occupy movement, Bob, what is your take on this American autumn, as some are calling it? Well, my take is it was a long time coming, and the communists are running the movement, being financed by the Illuminati, which is George Soros. And the Illuminati created communism, Marxist, Leninism, the Bolsheviks, the Mensheviks. Most people don't even know what I'm talking about. I mean, they've never studied history. They don't have a clue. Fascism, finance right from New York City and London. Hitler never knew it, but we know it, and we can prove it. And so they have funded this movement, and what's their goal? It's very simple, anarchy, and a, I guess the best word for it is uh, total martial law. And that's where they'll come and go to every single house and knock on the door. And if you don't answer, they'll kick it down to find out if you have any wealth hidden, 
whether it's dollars or silverware or gold and silver coins and bullion or guns, they'll take them. And that will lead to open insurrection in America. And that's exactly what they want. And at that point in time, the only thing you can do is go after the people who planned this and show them that we know what you're doing and we're going to put an end to it. Because if you are the serpent's head, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we're going to lop it off. That's the way that works. They are in far more danger than we are. Because there's people like me who are going to go after them. And even if they have 100 or 200 people around them to defend them, if you want somebody dead, they're going to be dead. So that's what these people in the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberger Group, and all of those other groups, that's what they can expect this time. Because the public of the world has learned in a great mass, not all of them, but we don't need all of them to understand. 15 to 20 percent is sufficient. And in every single country in the world, those people are not going to be around long. So we get your number. We're waiting. You move, and we'll counter move. It's like a chess game. And I, now I you, believe the. Now you Bob, know why they don't want me on radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, Bob, I, I think that the counter move is actually happening in the Occupy movement itself because, like I said, there are libertarians, there are Ron Paul supporters, there are in the fetters in there actually talking to these fellow protesters. Most, most of them are just generally angry at the situation. They know something's wrong. They can't put their finger on it just yet. They know that, that Wall Street has something to do with it, but they haven't you know, grasped the big picture. And you have uh, these other individuals who are a bit more enlightened, a bit more woken up to what's really going on. They're going in. They're talking about the Federal Reserve. They're talking about all this stuff. And it, they're not going to wake up everybody, but I do think that there is potential here, Bob, to wake up uh, a number, a portion, a percentage-wise, of this Occupy movement. Well, even if you wake up only 20%, that's all you need. Think of it that way. So by creating what they've created, may, they may end up in neutralizing, neutralizing themselves. Because when somebody said, well, you see that guy over there? He's from the 60s and the 70s. He's a hardcore communist. Do you really want to be with this guy? I know what they say about the things that are going on is correct. But this solution is enslavement. Look what happened in, in Russia. You don't have to go any further. The people wanted a change. They got it. It was horrible. First revolution was in 1907. Second was 1918. The right, white Russian forces of the Tsar were fighting the Germans in the southern front and were being attacked by, from the rear by the Red Army. Read history. It's all there. And that's what's going to happen again unless we can neutralize them. I know how these people think. They're all getting paid. Come on. Nice salary. They're doing what they think is the right thing to do. They're wrong. Well, most definitely they're wrong, Bob. And I also see the possibility of this whole Occupy the Movement funded by Soros and them as you know, potentially blowing up in their face, especially when you have Alex Jones and others out there uh, forging the Occupy the Fed movement, which is you know, set to kind of be, a, I guess, a continuation of that. You know, finally, another example of waking people up saying, hey, look, it's not just Wall Street. It's not just the government. It's also these central banks that are a huge part of the problem. What I should have done with Alex Jones is send him an email this morning and ask him, why do you always pick Fridays to go off and do all these things? Because I'm on the air with you on Friday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's okay. One of the things it does do, it lets me talk about the things I want to talk about <laughs> and not the things that Alex wants to talk about. <laughs> but that's okay. Anyway, I was just fooling. I know. Most most of the time, you guys want to talk about the exact same things, just like you and me want to talk about 
the same things because you know generally these these issues we bring up are are concerning they're having an effect on us all you know whether uh, you're aware of what's going on or you're uh, completely in the dark and hopefully there are people that are listening to us for the first time you and me and you and Alex Jones when you guys are together that are saying wait a minute I, I never thought of it that way I never I never got it you know hopefully you know we're, we are doing that hopefully we are making a difference oh we're making a big difference big difference you know, the government is even sending emails at random to people and saying, uh, oh, I got one today. Uh, Chapman says gold's going to uh, $400 an ounce. Uh, this is psychological warfare is what it is. And fortunately, this uh, person contacted me. But other ha others have as well. They don't know what to do. They just don't know what to do. And they're trying tricks like this. Uh, three weeks ago, we caught them email bombing us. And uh, we traced it to Bank of America, which is a front for the Justice Department. And the Mossad, incidentally, as well. They don't think we know that, but they know now with the, that we know that. And uh, I don't know why they're involved, but uh, they are. And they're not getting away with anything. And these rinky-dink things that they do, they don't work. And they're like children. I'm, I'm not going to tell them what they should do because it would make life very dangerous for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's the sad reality. We have, we have so many people now that are children, unfortunately, and, and they need to start acting like adults. They need to start becoming more responsible for themselves and doing their research, not simply going by what the, the idiot box tells them is true, do their own research, look into things, and start becoming more independent and less dependent. All I have to do is listen to these programs and read a few publications from people who really know what they're talking about. That's all i got to do. Yeah, definitely. And, and uh, you know, if, if they want to tell their friends and family about what they've discovered, what they've woken up to, uh, that wouldn't exactly hurt our cause either. <laughs> well, usually they get rejected and they don't know how to handle it. Yeah. And, you know, and, I, I've and, been But there. that's okay. That's normal. Because if you tell members of your family, if for no other reason they reject what you say because you're not supposed to know that. And how could you have the brains to go and do something like that? And that's true. Believe me. That's absolutely correct there, Bob. And, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's difficult because I've been down that road. You know, the moment when I first woke up about this, I started telling my friends and family. You know, some of them were, you know, obviously didn't believe me and were just being very, very uh, kind and uh, considerate. But then there were others that were basically calling me a complete nut job and a wacko. But you, you can't let that stop you from trying to tell and warn as many people as possible, in my opinion. You know, I think you're right. I think what happens, too, you get inured to it. And what I mean by that is that after a period of time, uh, you don't care anymore what people think. I had a head start. I never cared what people thought. I mean, from the time I was seven or eight years old, when I found out how corrupt the world was, I said to myself, hey, I got to find an angle to make it work for me. And I did. But where I lived, it was, corruption was beyond belief. Not just the mafia. I'm talking about in everyday commerce, so to speak. It's it's just really incredible, incredible, the um, the depth of corruption today, and it's really, really deeply ingrained. I mean, the things that the mob used to do, everybody does it uh, because it's okay. You're breaking the law, but you know who cares? That's why I call a crime. So you do it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's nothing new. I mean, corruption has always been around. But, you know, over the past couple of decades, I mean, it's just gotten 
out of control. And Bob, we got only a few minutes left. Uh, a couple of quick email questions for you. Uh, this one coming from Michael. Uh, does the Federal Reserve interfere with the markets? I mean, that's a pretty obvious answer. <laughs> and the answer is yes. They're part of that team, President's Working Group in Financial Markets. Uh, that's the uh, Fed, uh, the Fed of New York, which is the uh, financial center Fed, and then the SEC and the CFTC, and they have their own committees, and they, they employ thousands of people who spend day and night rigging every market in the world. Isn't that terrific? Yeah, I mean... It's- it's just sad. I mean, it just goes back to what we were talking about, the control and the corruption. Uh, one more question uh, from uh, LT. Uh, he, he wants to know, if, if you had to guess, Bob, how many trillions of U.S. dollars are out there worldwide? Uh, probably 75. I mean, who knows? I've heard that figure before, so I don't know. Yeah, and, and that doesn't even include the... Uh, the uh, the uh, digital uh, money that you know is not worth the uh, paper it's not written on, as Gerald Salente says. Yeah. Well, we just got to keep uh, slogging along, just like an infantryman, and uh, until the war is won, we lose battles here and there, but that's okay. That's what wars are all, are all about, and uh, we got to flank the enemy and then hit them right in the middle. And let's see them try to get away. I, I agree with you on that, that statement 110%, Bob. We just got to keep fighting. We've lost a couple battles, but we've also won a few. And the war is not going to end, and it's just going to keep on going. But I, I, I do believe that as long as we continue to stay in the fight, our chances of ultimately winning the war will improve. But the moment we give up, uh, it's, it's done. It's over. You, know? you, you, you can't give up. And we got about a minute left, Bob. Uh, how can people get the International Forecaster? Uh, they can, uh, the email copy comes out Wednesdays and, Friday, uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, around 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month. You can go to the site and get a free copy, theinternationalforecaster.com, forecasters, F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R.com. And uh, we also have another uh, address, and that is www.int. Uh, F O R E C A S T E R dot com, intforecaster.com. And if you'd like to ask a question, we answer everyone or uh, get a uh, free copy or get a copy of our latest uh, report on gold and silver shares. Uh, you can email us, and that's Bob, B O B, at I N T F O R E C A S T E R dot com, Bob at intforecaster. Dot com, And for those of you who'd like to call in toll-free, that number is 877-479-8178, 877-479-8178. Get free copies there, and they have a special offer there of a one-year free subscription, and the offer is terrific. If you want to be a subscriber, that's the way to do it. I agree entirely. That is the way to do it. Bob Chapman, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone.